Charlotte, Charlotte versus Connecticut. Losing in Charlotte, 37-29. Uh, yeah, I'm not in my home state anymore. Aaron Rodgers led a furious comeback but fell short. The Packers are now 6-2 and two and the Panthers are 8-0. and oh. Skip, what's your takeaway from this one? Stephen A. Smith, I want you to know, as your brother from another mother, I'm, I'm here for you today. I got you. I got you. I, I'm going to have your back on this one. Because we all know how painful this game was for you. Because as everyone here will now attest, He's a and bad you man. before, the bad man is no longer the bad man. Mm -hmm. The baddest man in the NFL is Tom Brady. Am I right? Once again yesterday, the bad man was just simply bad. He, he looked ordinary to me. I, I actually started feeling sorry for Aaron oh, Rodgers in this half. game. So here's what happened. I'm, I'm going to give Aaron Rodgers one small break here. Obviously, the Green Bay defense has gone south the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, it was number one in the NFL in points allowed. And without Sam Shields in your secondary, not that they're your team, I know it's right. just your quarterback, but... That they're they're not very good. They're just bad. And certainly, when they allowed the 37th point of the game to Cam Newton and company with 9:22 left, 37 to 14 Carolina, a little fracas broke out on the sideline. And you had obviously to, to me because they could get no pass rush mm -hmm. on Cam Newton. All of a sudden, Ha Ha Clinton Dix is in the face of the great Julius Peppers, who's back in the face of Ha 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 Ha. And all of a sudden, Raji gets in the middle yep. of it, and they had a little thing that I don't think it was a big thing. It wasn't. And it actually inspired the defense to go right back out and force a three and out. And then they intercepted Cam Newton, and suddenly Aaron Rodgers was put back in the enviable position of, hey. You score eight points here and you force overtime. And all of a sudden, it's fourth and four at the four-yard line. And what happened? Aaron Rodgers has gotten gun shy. We know he's been under a little more heat than usual this year. He has not handled it very well. He's gotten tentative. He's gotten deer in headlights. He started to flinch in the pocket. And he was the first to admit, I messed it up. I got scared because I saw something, meaning a pass rusher, instead of Randall Cobb breaking immediately open, and we see what happens with Tom Brady behind a makeshift offensive line. He's a quick read, he's pre-snap read, and boom, the ball is out. Aaron Rodgers can't get rid of the ball. He is brain locking under fire. He's looking for a rusher instead of the first open receiver. And he flat out did not see Randall Cobb for what even Aaron Rodgers admitted after the game. He was, he was big about it. He stepped up to the mic and he said that was a pitch and catch touchdown that I should have thrown. And again, they would have had to go for two to, to force overtime. But that's what Aaron Rodgers has degenerated into this football season. Well, I agree with you. He hasn't looked like the bad man by any stretch of the imagination. We all know that in all seriousness. But I think you cut him some slack, number one, because I thought the second half performance in bringing them back uh, within a position mm -hmm. to tie this game, I think that was admirable because they were getting blown out. Number two, I can't emphasize this enough. Um, <clears throat> listen, the loss of Jordy Nelson is devastating because Randall Cobb hasn't been what you thought he would be over the last three three games. The first three or four games this season, he was formidable. Over the last three games, that hasn't been the case. More importantly than that, I mean, listen, we talk about we talk about a James Jones. We talk about an Adams. They're decent. We know this. Uh, but Jones, you remember the Oakland and the Giants? Mm -hmm. Neither of them wanted him. He comes back to Green Bay where he had connected with Aaron Rodgers for many, many years, so we know what he can do with that. He made him look good first half of the year. But this guy, Richard Rodgers, that's the devastating blow to me because at that tight end spot, you need somebody that draws attention between the numbers so you can attack outside. If you don't have to worry about somebody in between the numbers but so much, then excuse me, you're able to key on the outside. And if you're able to key on the outside, then it's tougher for Randall Cobb and those guys. Randall Cobb is a really, really good uh, thousand plus yard receiver, no doubt, but he's a really, really good number two. He's not necessarily a number one, but he's the best receiver that you have. And when you've got to throw outside the numbers and you're not drawing any attention between the numbers, I think that inhibits you to some degree. All of a sudden, Eddie Lacy wasn't running the mm -hmm. ball effectively as well. Lacy and Starks were supposed to do the job. So there are things going around, and the level of protection that Aaron Rodgers was getting from time to time wasn't there. Now, he can't be absolved because at the end of the day, he's that bad man for a reason. I've seen him play better under equal amount of duress. So I'm mm -hmm. not making an excuse. I'm just simply acknowledging, let's be clear about something here. The things that he normally was 
was capable of doing. He can't necessarily do now because the offensive line is suspect. The play calling still seems to be an adjustment. You've got re receivers. None of them are elite on the outside. You have nothing to point to in between the numbers at the tight end spot because Richard Rodgers ain't cutting the mustard. And then on top of it all, your running game doesn't scare anybody. So the combination of all those different things, you remember, they don't have to stack the line of scrimmage to get uh, to, to neutralize Green Bay's running game because those guys don't perform at an elite level at this particular moment of time. They're good, they're solid, they're strong in between the tackles, but they don't have any elusivity on their resume and their repertoire, rather. So because of that, what happens is it's all about Aaron Rodgers. And it ain't just up to him to throw the football. He has to be a quote-unquote playmaker mm. because he has to exceed expectations because of the limited stuff that he's doing. Then you take into account, what are the two games they lost? They go up against an elite defense in Denver, even though it didn't look like one last night against mm. Indy. It did look like one all season long through the Green Bay game, okay? And then, and then the offense is stockpiling 500 yards against the Green Bay's defense. And then you follow up the the Denver defense with the Carolina defense. I mean, these are two of the better defenses in the NFL. It ain't like Aaron Rodgers just woke up one day and was going up against the Giants or Rob Ryan's New Orleans Saints. He was going up against Denver and then Carolina. And the opposition was going up against Green Bay, who I told you their defense was suspect. Sam Shields being without them is a devastating loss because they ain't that good with him there. So you know they ain't going to be that good with, them, with, 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 the, with him going. And Clay Matthews how about getting that Cam Newton? That ain't happened yesterday. Mm. So all of those things being considered, Aaron Rodgers had the deck stacked up against him. He didn't respond the way that we're capable, that he's capable of responding. He's lucky because he's got a bye week next week. I'm talking about the Detroit Lions. That's a bye week. In case y'all didn't know, it's a bye week. So the point is, he'll be just fine. He'll be just fine. They'll get right on track, and things will be okay. But at this moment in time, I don't think you can ignore the fact that Denver – and Carolina with two defenses that he was going up against, and their defense didn't show up in either game. Okay, but at Denver, he threw Aaron Rodgers for no, 77 was yards? Was 77 was yards? Was I watched Andrew Luck, as bad as he's been, pick apart that Denver yeah, but defense but in go, Indy. But, but, but wait a minute. You can't go by that because let me tell you this, and I don't want to get into that because we're going to touch on we that mm -hmm. a little bit later on in the show. But we saw some of the changes Indy made, but let's be clear about something. And Denver came in there ill-prepared last night, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show. But Aqib Tlaib and, and, Harris, and Chris Harris, mm -hmm. With T.J. Ward back there with them, too, at one of the safety spots. I mean, this secondary in Denver is elite. Didn't look that way last mm -hmm. night. But it, they, for the most part, they've been elite all year long up until last night. And Aaron Rodgers, ha I dare say they ha he hasn't had a lot to work with. So I'm going to ask you this question sure. that I asked you again uh, last sure. Thursday, I think it was. Yep. Is it possible we're seeing that Jordy Nelson made Aaron Rodgers more than vice versa? No. I don't think it is. I think that what happens is, is that Jordy Nelson helped make Randall Cobb. Jordy Nelson helped make whatever tight end was playing for them. Jordy Nelson helped Lacey run for over a thousand yards because the combination of those, the, the, when you've got an elite deep threat receiver, it's just, I'll give you a perfect example, Skip. You and I, who do we talk about? We haven't seen him this year because he's, he's not been healthy. Remember how we used to rave about Deshaun Jackson? when he was with the Philadelphia Eagles, and then he went mm -hmm. to the Washington Redskins. What we said about him is that he was an elite deep threat, mm -hmm. one of the elite deep threats in the game of football. So because of his presence alone and the attention that you had to pay towards him, you couldn't key on other guys the way you normally could. We, we both. So if that was the case, Jordy Nelson clearly is a deep threat for Aaron Rodgers. And Jordy Nelson with Randall Cobb speaks for itself. When you look at Aaron Rodgers throw a football, again, I watched the game, all right? I haven't covered it nearly as long as you have, so I'll defer to you on that level. But I listen to NFL aficionados all the time, and they tell me they have never seen somebody throw a football like Aaron Rodgers. It's just have, been over the last they, couple of weeks. It hasn't looked impressive. Have they seen Tom Brady before? Have they, they seen Tom Brady? No, I'm serious. Tom Tom Brady, wait, wait a second. Well, we're going to get there. Well, does Tom Brady have a deep threat? I haven't well, seen no, one this well, year. Just, I've been watching. I'm waiting for a deep threat. I don't well, see what one. Well, what you're, what you're doing is you're doing Molly's job because oh. you don't want me to go to that subject yet. I, oh. We're going to Tom Brady oh. next, are we not? After commercial? Are we not doing that? Or you want to bring it up now?
Because we could go there now. I was enjoying it right now, actually. All right, now we can go there yeah. now. You want to go there yeah. now? Let's go there now. Yeah. Let's go. I'm no, good. let's let's stay on topic. Okay? He's trying to sit up there uh -huh. and speed up the subject and no, change I'm it. I mean, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. We, we can go there. You're saying we, Aaron Rodgers listen, doesn't listen, have a deep we, threat we're to make all that. We're surrounded by these wonderful servicemen and women. You think that everybody here loves Tom Brady? We can discuss Tom Brady. Let's go. I don't know that anybody loves Tom Brady here, do they? We are in Massachusetts, but... I, I will I will acknowledge, you know, he does look sharp in those suits when he's walking in the court. Mm. I, I think he looks sharp in the pocket. That's where I think he looks sharp. No, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. I am, I'm just saying. I, I agree on both those subjects. Mm -hmm. So now the Vikings tie the Packers at 6-2 and two atop the NFC Remember North. Shows, relax. Oh, don't worry okay. about it. Oh, by the way, we don't even know if Teddy Bridgewater is going to be playing next week. Oh, after that. we're going to get into that because Mike Zimmer was hot, and we're going to get into that whole subject.